In 2009, a man named Brandon was asleep in an outpost within Afghanistan. He was slumped against a sandbag, which he was using as a makeshift bed, and all that could be heard was the snores of his comrades around him. The outpost was cramped and far too small to fit the 30 soldiers which occupied it, but there was nowhere else they could all stay safely. Amongst the buzzing of the flies, the desert heat which radiated through his thick uniform, and the air of uncertainty that encapsulated the energy of the outpost, he somehow managed to get some shut-eye. But just a couple hours into his slumber, he was awoken by a loud thud. Within viewable distance, a mortar strike had just been launched near his outpost, and it was only a couple hundred meters away from hitting himself and his comrades. Quickly and with immense fear, Brandon shot up and started helping everyone prepare to evacuate. But, unfortunately, they weren't quick enough. On that day, Brandon had to watch some of his closest friends in the military pass away. Around eight years after the incident, Brandon is still suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder, which is common amongst soldiers who are on the front line in war. And luckily, he is finally starting to get the help he needs to recover from the tragedy in which he had to watch unfold. How many other stories like Brandon have we seen so far throughout our history? Stories of people going through incredible amounts of suffering and discomfort to the point where it permanently alters their physiology, attitude towards life, and mental health. Till this day, I still get comments from people who have been beaten down by uncomfortable, painful situations that went on long enough to leave a lasting imprint on their realities for the worse. Are these people simply just not tough enough to get through hardships, or is there a point in which leaving your comfort zone actually does more harm than good? I ask these questions because what is constantly preached within topics regarding self-improvement is to step outside of your comfort zone more. But that is much too general of a statement to hold its weight for absolutely every single hypothetical scenario in which you could step outside of your comfort zone. So today, I'm going to try and answer these questions. What is the point in which leaving your comfort zone does more harm than good? What are situations in which you should and shouldn't leave your comfort zone? And how can one improve their ability to transform discomfort, pain, and suffering into growth? So let's start by tackling the first question, and I think it'll be useful here to reframe this question into a different set of words. Basically, we're trying to figure out the highest level of discomfort or pain one can go through before it starts to do negative damage. Now, I believe there are three types of damage that can be inflicted upon someone. Positive damage, neutral damage, or negative damage. Positive damage is when the pain or discomfort you go through produces a net positive for your physical and mental health. Potential examples of this are lifting weights to tear down your muscles and build them back stronger, taking a cold shower for 5 minutes, or doing a mentally challenging assignment. Neutral damage is when the pain or discomfort you go through doesn't really lead to any sort of positive growth, but also doesn't necessarily make you feel any worse either. A good example of this that I can think of from my life is when you're forced to go to a social event by a parent when you're a kid. You don't really talk to anyone unless it's forced out of you, and it's still uncomfortable. And yet, the end result doesn't really produce any sort of significant change out of you, you kind of just stay the same. Lastly, we have negative damage. These are the uncomfortable or painful things that produce a net negative. And some potential examples for this are lifting too much or too heavy to the point where you constantly overtrain, going through an extremely traumatic experience, or working yourself to death before you can properly recover. Now, here's the thing. For the most part, these types of damages you can do to yourself are quite subjective. For someone who has a lot of experience with rejection and they don't really care what people think, getting laughed at after approaching an entire group of girls might feel like an extremely liberating experience to them. And they'd walk away from it having gained more indifference to being rejected, which could be seen as a positive. But for someone who has been rejected their entire life and has a very low self-esteem, that type of rejection could only further fuel their beliefs that they are worthless and will never be confident. Similarly, someone who has an incredible genetic ability to recover without much sleep or food might see a net positive effect from the damage or discomfort they do to themselves in the gym, while another person who does the exact same routine as them but doesn't have that ability would see a net negative effect. What everybody's comfort zone looks like and the size of that comfort zone is different. So what you really need to do is take a good look at who you are, what you can handle, and how you feel about yourself right now, and evaluate whether you think the discomfort or pain you are going to intentionally or unintentionally go through will end up producing positive damage to you. 
This is probably going to require some experimentation on your end because it's usually not something that you just know intuitively. And to do so, try continuously pushing the limit and frequency of the uncomfortable or painful thing until you feel like you can hit that sweet spot between it promoting growth while not setting you back. Or at least not setting you back too much because some failures or setbacks are the biggest catalysts for growth. I feel like for me, I'm finally at the point where I understand how many days I should be resistance training versus how many days I should be taking rest days in order to optimally recover. I remember when I was training six days a week, by the end of some of those days, I would often have extreme soreness and a lot of brain fog because my body was so focused on repairing my muscles that it didn't even allow me to think properly. But once I experimented a little bit and reduced my training to four days a week with two days of rest in between, and I would train one rep before failure, I was able to more consistently see progress and not have to take long breaks off the gym because I overtrained for too long. Another example I can think of is when I'm doing mentally difficult work. If I try to work literally all day for 12 hours straight, my sleep suffers immensely and that leads me to do much worse work the next day. Whereas if I only do a few hours of really deep focused work and I only reach 80% of my work capacity, I'll make much more progress over a longer period of time because it's much more easy to stay consistent. And that's another great benefit to doing this kind of experimentation and figuring these things out. You may not see progress as quickly as if you were pushing yourself way past your limits for a short period of time, but you'll make way more progress over a longer period of time because you never step outside of your comfort zone too much to the point where it only produces negative damage. In other words, the person who has never trained before and decides to run a marathon will make way less progress than the person who decides to run a mile a day for 26 days. But I also think we need a better understanding as to when you should and shouldn't step outside of your comfort zone, so let's go over that question next. In general, I think there are situations in which the amount of pain and discomfort that situation will provide won't be beneficial to just about anybody. Some very clear examples I can think of are being on a battlefield and watching your comrades die, trying exposure therapy on someone with trauma who isn't in an environment where they can overcome it, or eating nails for breakfast. How tough am I? How tough am I? I had a bowl of nails for breakfast this morning. <laughs> yes, so? Without any milk. So when it comes to when you should leave your comfort zone, I think we can apply an overarching statement to this. You should step outside of your comfort zone when it isn't intentionally leading to you getting physically or mentally hurt, unless you know the damage will be positive. It isn't going to leave you out of commission for a very long period of time after doing it. And it's the right amount of discomfort that leads to growth instead of a more negative outlook on life and yourself, which you figure out through experimentation. There is far too much nuance apart from what I just described here in regards to leaving your comfort zone when it's appropriate. So we're just gonna leave the guidelines where they are right now and that's good. And just to be clear, I am not suggesting that you should stay complacent and live inside of your comfort bubble forever, especially if you are unhappy with who or where you currently are. What I am suggesting is that levels of discomfort and the way in which you interpret that discomfort, pain, or suffering is going to make all the difference as to whether this leaving outside your comfort zone thing makes or breaks you. So now let's go over the last question. How can one improve their ability to transform discomfort, pain, and suffering? Suffering into growth. Because if the answer was as simple as just putting yourself through more discomfort and pain, then the people who have dealt with that for the majority of their life would be the strongest, and in many cases, that's not what happens. An important element that is essential to improving your ability to handle discomfort is reflection. If you are not equipped with the tools needed in order to properly reflect on pain, suffering, and discomfort, then your existence will forever haunt you. When you put yourself in uncomfortable situations, whether it produces the result you want or not, you need to reflect on what worked and what didn't. Ask yourself, what's something I did well? What's something I can improve on for the next time? And you can get even more specific with these questions based on the activity that you're participating in. For example, if you decide to do a big presentation in front of a bunch of students at school and you kind of study your words and feel anxious the entire time, you could ask yourself, how much more preparation should I do before the next time? And what's the mindset I need to adopt right before I go into the presentation so that I'm not scared? That's on top of putting yourself in more scenarios like that will eventually expand your comfort zone bubble and make public speaking be within that bubble instead of outside of it. Remember, you should see each way of positive discomfort as an opportunity. An opportunity to be a more competent person who can handle more of life's inevitable challenges. And that is part of the certain mindset 
mindset, philosophy, whatever you want to call it, that has always helped me in times of discomfort, pain, and suffering. After you have read pieces of fiction like Berserk or philosophies such as Nietzsche's, you eventually get to the point of complete and total acceptance of the negative. All those thoughts you have about why you're not good enough, why you'll never succeed, and how scary the uncomfortable situation might be, all the times you thought, it gets better, but it doesn't, and all the times you've looked around at the pain, suffering, and misfortunes you go through eventually become a reason for you to rejoice. The incredible marvel that is life, with all its fragility, fear, and hardships that could be taken away from us at any moment, it's all necessary for one to even know what finding joy is like. For one to even experience pleasure, one must experience some form of pain. And I bet if many of you really looked at the times in your life where living felt the most unfulfilling, it wouldn't be when you were super uncomfortable. It would be when you felt completely indifferent towards everything. To voluntarily accept the suffering you will go through, and in some cases embrace it, is an act of rebellion against a world that is full of injustice, inequality, and pain. And I know there's a lot of you that have gone through far more suffering than most of the people in this world, but it is possible to get to the point of loving and accepting one's fate even in the most brutal of times. Things you go through in this lifetime will be objectively terrible. So instead of trying to escape those inevitable truths and see them as hell on earth, why not choose to use the free will you have over your perspective of discomfort and not only accept it, but thank it for its teachings. No matter what, some things will feel too hard to bear, but if you continue to employ that philosophy on life and push through things even when they don't make sense or they're painful and uncomfortable, and you say to yourself, this is what it truly means to experience life, then you will become unbreakable in times of struggle and suffering. But the only way you can convince yourself that you are capable of doing so is if you start to voluntarily leave your comfort zone in a way that produces growth instead of negative damage. And that choice is all up to you. I remember when my diet consisted of Sour Patch Kids and barbecue Fritos and my sleep was just terrible and it made this mindset of being strong in the face of adversity and discomfort so much harder to employ. Things like nutritional deficiencies and not having the proper diet is just shooting yourself in the foot and giving yourself a handicap when it comes to being able to face life's inevitable hard challenges. And one thing that could help you with that is the sponsor of today's video, which is Athletic Greens. Athletic Greens is a formula made up of 75 high quality whole food sourced ingredients and it basically combines every single supplement you could ever think of needing. It has an adaptogenic formula that helps support mental clarity, prebiotics and probiotics for gut health, and many vitamins and minerals that support immunity, energy, and focus like vitamin B12, vitamin C, zinc, and selenium. And unlike a lot of supplements which you just end up pissing away because your body can't fully absorb each of the ingredients that are listed on the nutrition facts, the AG1 formula is very bioavailable so you can absorb the nutrients much easier. It also blends into water very easily and tastes pretty good too, which was surprising to me. I've been using it for almost a year now, and when I actually stick to it and make it part of my daily morning routine, I feel a noticeable difference in how I'm able to perform when doing work as well as at the gym. The way I think of it is not as a replacement for real whole foods, which are of course king, but rather added insurance in case I don't hit all my nutrient targets for that day. So if you want that added insurance to your health, Athletic Greens is actually hooking up my viewers with a year supply of their vitamin D3 plus K2 complex, which I am also taking every morning, as well as five free travel packs with your first purchase when you use the link in my description. So go take advantage of that offer, get yourself a free year supply of vitamin D as well as five free travel packs and click the first link in the description. Thank you very much to all my patrons on this channel on Patreon. If you don't know what Patreon is, it's a platform separate from YouTube where I put out exclusive content and you can talk to me one-on-one -on -one over the phone on there. If you want to check that out, link in the description as well. And if you are trying to build a more resilient mindset and just get through adversity better and get outside of your comfort zone in a way that produces growth, then check out this video where I explain another mindset that has helped me in times of struggle too. So yeah, that's it. Appreciate you guys for watching till the end and I'm signing off. Peace.